Hi folks, welcome back to uh, Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video here is just to describe uh, why the gravitational force is calculated the way it is. Uh, why the force of gravity is equal to mg, where m is the mass of uh, the particle and g is the acceleration of gravity. So here's a picture here. I like to you know talk about my little this uh, little lad here named Jimmy here. And Jimmy's sitting here and tried to put him there in Battle Creek, Michigan, where I'm at, uh, here at Kellogg Community College. Go Bears! And uh, um, if I kind of think about Jimmy here and Jimmy's basketball, right? And imagine that Jimmy dropped this basketball, maybe from a height of something like, or maybe he throws the basketball up in the air so the ball goes up and then down again. If you were to draw a velocity graph for that ball, against time. You know, when Jimmy first throws the ball, the velocity is positive. But the velocity decreases, decreases, decreases. Eventually it's zero at some time, the actual time not important. And then the ball, you know, continues accelerating and the speed gets higher and higher and higher. Now on its way back down, the velocity is now down. And if I'm calling up positive, these velocities would now be negative numbers. And it's real easy to show. If you, if you put a motion detector on this, that we use in physics a lot that detects the motion of the ball it would give you a graph that looks pretty much pretty much just like this and the slope of that line is the acceleration of the ball and it'll come out to be about 9.8 meter per second squared or about 32 foot per second squared, uh, depending on what units you're working in, pretty well anywhere on the surface of the Earth. That gravitational acceleration, I think, to two significant figures probably doesn't vary. You know, whether, you know, whether you're here or in Africa or in Europe or at the South Pole or in California or New York City, that 9.8 meter per second squared is good pretty well everywhere on the surface of the Earth. Now, you go to another planet surface like the moon, this is quite a bit smaller. Or if you went to a larger planet that had a lot more mass, this would be quite a bit bigger. Or if you get way off the surface of the Earth, you know, up here in a rocket ship or something, many miles away, if you drop something, the acceleration will be a little bit less as well. But anywhere at the surface of the Earth, the acceleration is downward at about 9.8 meter per, seconds per second. Now, if we were to draw a free body of that ball, so, you know, as the ball's falling, there's only one force on it. You know, if we throw out air drag, the gravitational force. And air drag is not a significant force acting on a basketball at, at relatively low speeds. You know, um, air drag is a very important force at high speeds, and it's a very important force for things like beach balls or tissue paper or things that have a lot of its surface area compared to their weight. But when you're talking about a rock or a chunk of metal or your car keys or your cell phone at relatively low speeds, air drag is not a significant force. So as the ball's flying through the air, this is the only force acting. And by Newton's second law, which is sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration, the only force is the gravitational force. And I'm going to go ahead and do down positive because my standard rule of thumb for writing Newton's second law equations is to identify the acceleration direction, call that positive. So we're going to have the force of gravity equals ma and it's important to realize as long as there's no other forces acting vertically here this is the only force uh, acting on that ball and the acceleration is the value that uh, we observe time and time and time again when we drop a relatively heavy object like a rock or a ball and we use a again a detector here to um, plot its velocity graph against time slope of that graph ends up being 9.8 meter per second squared, you know, whether you're in Europe, Africa, or the U.S. So this is a known value, and that value is the 9.8 meter per second squared, and that's what we call the gravitational acceleration, g. And that's why the gravitational force is calculated by mg. If the mass is in kilograms and the g is in meter per second squared, the force comes out in a quantity called newtons, a newton. In the English system, your mass is typically in slugs, and the acceleration is in uh, 
it would be 32 foot per second squared and then you get a gravitational force out uh, in pounds or what they call pound force. So anyway this video just meant to be a short little video on why the gravitational force is equal to mg. Uh, it's because that's the gravitational acceleration at the surface of the earth and when you apply Newton's second law with only one force acting that's what comes out of it. Now you know, I'm going to make other videos describing gravity. Um, in this video here, G is what I'm just going to call the gravitational acceleration, or I should say, what I, it's what I would call the acceleration at the surface of the Earth caused by gravity. I've got other videos that talk a bit more about what gravity is and how it's described in terms of uh, vector fields. And uh, probably someday I'll make a video about how gravity is described um, in relativistic physics. But anyway, this is why the gravitational force is equal to mg. Have a great day.